Welcome Internet to the Psychologist Casual Review and today we're going to be reviewing this short article by Nathaniel Ross called the As If Concept. So basically this paper is going to be about the As If Personality. Personality that was first um, studied by Dutch and then expanded by other authors. So here the goal of Nathaniel Ross is to basically do a summary of all the knowledge that was acquired. Of course, this was written in the late 60s, so there'll be much, many more since the update nowadays, but it's still very interesting because it takes the core idea of Dutch as, as if personality and, and creates a dialogue in a way between many, many authors. And here I'm going to try and make it the best I can to make it justice. And I'm going to start with the as if personality itself as defined by Dutch. So for Dutch, the acid personality is a personality disorder, not in terms of the DSM, but in terms of how the personality itself is structured. And in this personality, the main core uh, dynamic is going to be mimicking. So here, when we talk about mimicking, it is not about identifying, it's about becoming. So here I need to stretch this so you understand it well enough to understand the whole process. Is that it isn't about oh liking the trait of someone else or oh being inspired by someone else. It is trying to be someone else because the person themselves do not have a stable enough ego to be able to support an identity of their own. So they're going to glue themselves to someone else and try and do, in terms of personality, what the copy-paste function on the computer does, i.e. an exact replica. And this can be quite extreme, as noted by Dutch in one of her patients. Here it's not talked about in the article, but that's of memory when I read it from as a student, that basically some of, uh, some of her patients have gone to extreme lengths to identify. And when there's nothing left to identify with, they can even identify with animals. I think in the case of Helen Dutch, one of her patients went to the stage where she was going to identify with a dog. So it can be really extreme. So Nathaniel Ross starts with the definition of Dutch, but says that it's too rigid. Be why is that? Because basically those extreme examples of people that really identify with everything or anything as long as the ideal has been triggered are clinically quite rare. Uh, which is true. Clinically, you're not going to see too many of those. But for Nathaniel Ross, the whole point is that as if personality exists on a spectrum, and that spectrum is exactly what he's going to talk about. So for him, there is the as if personality of Dutch, and there are as if adaptations or as if behaviors. And that's going to be very interesting as he's going to present a whole different range of as-if phenomena. So for him, the as-if is very interestingly enough, not necessarily an ego weakness, but an ego strength. Why is that? Is because basically the ego can uh, snap into an identification to another. So it's an overly strong ego that in a way pushes the id, as an ego would, but also pushes the superego out of the framework. So here, when he says that, that it pushes out the superego, or it doesn't allow for the superego to be built, it doesn't mean the early superego, but the Freudian superego of rules, limitations, and also safety, safety for oneself, for others, the respect for society, and so on and so forth. He says, he explicitly states that in the case of as-if personalities, the superego is corruptible, because basically the over identif mimicking of others, not identification, but mimicking, I made a mistake there, the mimicking of others is so absolute, the ideal is so permissive, that it may leaves no more room for something that's going to be of a limitation, because the limitations have gone. And for him, many authors, the fundamental core of the, of the as-if personality is schizoid. So here I have to... I can say, put it into perspective. So this was the 60s. The concept of borderline personality disorder 
was not really there yet, or not to the full force of what we know now. So a lot of phenomena of borderline personality disorders was talked about as schizoid. So you have to know the difference because right now we wouldn't qualify them as such. We would qualify what he is talking about more as a borderline symptom rather than a schizoid. Even though I don't think that sins are so, but there you go. So schizoid at the time meant everything from narcissistic, borderline, schizoid, paranoid, and so on and so forth. It was everything that was non-neurotic. It's a str it was strange, but that was those were the days, right? Where schizoid was used for everything. Fundamentally, going back to the text, why is it schizoid? So it's schizoid because basically those people have a superficial demonstration of emotion, but at the core, they don't really care or show emotion. Like once you get the as if part of themselves uh, away, the, the core of who they are is uncaring, is unshowing of emotions in a way that he says is reminiscent from schizoid, that the only real fundamental emotion that's there, that's not taken in alexithymia, is anxiety. That's the fundamental core. And he says that for those people, the superego is not well constituted enough. And here I might add that he says that they are at risk of psychotic breakdown, because yet again, it was written in the 60s. So there's this idea that anything that's non-neurotic is at risk of becoming schizophrenic. Nowadays, we know it's not the case, but in those days, that's how they felt of the phenomena. But what he says is that at the very core, those people are like that because they weren't able to create, to forge a good enough relationship with the caregivers, that they became as if because there was an instability, an instability with the object, that the object was not being good enough for the person to be able to do a catharsis, to in a way invest the object and to be able to get something back from the object, meaning that it's in a perpetual state of frustrated narcissism, that the person cannot um, derive any pleasure of their identity, thus for they have to adopt uh, the identity of someone else. And he does state that Dutch, in her original conception, does link the as if personality with imposters, in the fact that imposters uh, adopt another personality, but However, the point of the imposter is that he tries to glue himself to the maximum and his identity, his mimicking is not as flexible as the as if, meaning that the imposter is going to stick to his, basically to his drift or grift, whereas the as if can change. It's much more flexible, much more quick. In a way, he gives the examples of people that are going to fall in love immensely are going to copy everything and then are going to devalue everything else very quickly. So it can go like that and like that in the blink of an eye. So here you see that borderline aspect of it in the fact of super evaluation and then devaluation. And that's a bit like what the as if does is that basically the as if takes traits because here in the idea that as if can be a spectrum, it's taking a trait and basically not developing the skills, even though they could develop the skills, but they're not going to do that, even though they might like having it. They ha like having it in the most superficial way. So they're going to take that superficialness and try and make it their own for themselves. But by doing so, in a way, they're not making it true to themselves, but more like uh, an armor, and they can't really use it at a core level, it's more on a surface level. And he says that that surface level is going to make them quite good at recognizing other certain level, surface level emotions or behaviors in other people, but fail to recognize the depth and the, and the profoundity of other humans, because they themselves are intrinsically in, having issues to try and connect with that. And that basically, he's also going to talk about the false self of Winnicott. That's saying that in a way, it's as if their true self was completely barred off. 
and that the, the false self, i.e. the as if part of themselves, cannot experience life for real, but is only a pretense. And that pretense is going to be at the core of their behavior. Everything is going to be there for the pretense. And sometimes they're even going to show off to the clinician saying, I have found the perfect way of adapting to the world. I am the absolutely perfect chameleon and so on and so forth. But what he says is that it, it creates that strange dichotomy where the patient is in a way fooling himself because when you go into depth, you see that the patient cannot truly adapt to the more demanding relationships, the more in-depth relationships, because they can't open up to that depth because of their as-if tendencies, that their adaptation is superficial. So that's very, very interesting. And he says that if we are to consider this whole as-if uh, personality in a spectrum, then we will see it much more prevalently than if we only see Helen Dutch's version of it, which I, and I agree with it, is the more extreme version of it, the more severe cases that, as if personalities. So I found that the text was very interesting, very rich in terms of everything that they give, in terms of how the superego is structured, how basically the identification works, how mimicking works. And it's very interesting also that he goes into um, when does it start. So for him, it starts between two and three when the child mimics and is going to finally find something which they can latch on to. They can mimic someone else. But in that mim mimicking also comes a problem that they are not the other person, but they give the illusion of being someone else. And he goes on to say that that's going to be the fundamental core of the as-if personality, the mimicking, not the identification, and not, um, how can I say, the secondary narcissism. It's going to be stuck in a primary narcissism, to use Freud's concept, i.e. the narcissism of the self, completely of the self and not the object, because the object and the self are undistinguished at that phase of life. And so, in a way, the narcissism cannot develop and create um, fertile ground for a good superego that differ differentiates the individual from others and also protects the individuality of others and of the self, because that's also one of the roles that's often uh, pushed off of the superego, brushed aside. But the superego protects the ego from itself and from others by making rules and boundaries very clear. So that is fundamentally interesting. And I found that this article is very clinically pertinent as the as if personality is something that I feel can be seen in touches and in a numerous amount of psychopathologies, but it's not going to be um, completely as extreme as described by Dutch. And I think that by reintegrating its subtlety and putting nuance into it, it can help us identify certain traits that are not primarily identifications, even though they might seem as such, but something, de something deeper, something of the order of mimic mimicry, rather than something more evolved, something more subtle, something more nuanced, something more massive and protective in a way. So... Very interesting article, quite short, uh, 20, 24 pages. So if you're ever interested uh, in as if personalities, I think you should give it a read. Uh, also to conclude on it, I think that even though schizoid personalities can have an as if element, I think they go beyond the as if. Um, I don't necessarily fully agree with the article that it's only a schizoid problem, I think it's on the whole spectrum of psychopathology and it's an adaptation. So I just wanted to make it very clear that it might be part of the schizoid spectrum, but it's not only schizoid. The, that pretty much sums it up. So if you liked the video, please feel free to comment or if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.